15 NASA missions, including Hubble, Webb, Perseverance, and more, turned toward a single interstellar visitor, 3I Atlas. The mobilization dwarfed the response to Taumuamua or Borisov and triggered an all-hands campaign rarely seen in the history of planetary science. Why did a seemingly ordinary comet force NASA to halt observations across the solar system? What did they see that shook their experts into action? It began with a single alert buried deep inside NASA's internal network. Shane Byan, principal investigator for High Rise, was among the first to notice the data streaming in from the newly tracked interstellar object. Within hours of the initial trajectory calculations, internal slack channels across NASA's planetary science teams lit up. Early measurements hinted at a comet behaving unlike anything seen before. Automated scripts flagged its coma and tail geometry as statistical outliers. Bayan, known for his calm precision, sent one abrupt message. We need Mars pointing now. That single sentence set off a chain reaction. Normally, a new target request moves through weeks or months of proposals and approvals. This time, the process collapsed into hours. Scientists from MAVEN, Perseverance, and the Europa Clipper team joined a flurry of chats, each pushing for a slice of observation time. Command windows were rewritten on the fly. Within 72 hours, two Mars imaging slots were locked for high rise. A pace one mission planner described as borderline reckless but absolutely necessary. The urgency didn't come from administrators or PR. It came from the data itself. As one MAVEN team member later said, you could feel the adrenaline. Everyone wanted in. By that weekend, NASA's internal coordination logs showed something extraordinary. Hubble and James Webb agreed to synchronize their observations, while solar missions like SOHO and STEREO paused routine coronal monitoring to pivot toward the incoming object. Even the Psyche spacecraft, busy in its own asteroid belt campaign, carved out an eight-tower block to track it. Behind the scenes, minor asteroid and heliophysics programs quietly rescheduled. The decision had been made collectively, not by directive but by instinct, the kind of instinct that only surfaces when scientists realize they are seeing something that doesn't belong. Securing telescope time across NASA's fleet is a zero-sum game. Every new observation means sacrificing another. Yet one by one, the missions gave way. Parker Solar Probe delayed its solar wind campaign by a week. Lucy canceled a calibration run to photograph 3 I Atlas from a unique orbital angle. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter postponed its annual polar cap survey so high-rise could track the object's path. Even Webb's exoplanet team agreed to shift a long-planned transit study, a rare concession that required international sign-off. By mid-July, NASA's schedule looked like a game of musical chairs. SOHO and STEREO, usually relentless in monitoring solar eruptions, redirected their sensors. Psyche, Lucy, Maven, Parker, Hubble, Webb, all focusing on one traveler. It hadn't happened before, not even with Taumuamua. In internal memos, the phrase, transformative opportunity, appeared again and again. Cross-mission timetable shifts are reserved for events that promise a fundamental leap in knowledge. NASA had just declared, in bureaucratic language, that this object might change cometary science forever. When the first images arrived, that possibility no longer seemed exaggerated. On July 21st, Hubble captured a frame that stopped several scientists mid-sentence. Instead of the ragged triangular tail familiar to every comet since Halley, 3 I Atlas appeared wrapped in a smooth bluish cocoon, a teardrop-shaped envelope glowing softly against the dark. No sharp edges, no ragged plumes, just a gentle gradient of light fatting outward. Isophotes traced from the core revealed near-perfect symmetry, more like a manufactured shell than a natural plume. The cocoon's hue leaned blue-green, suggesting CO2 and co-dominance with little water vapor. One researcher remarked, This doesn't look like a snowball falling apart. It looks hardened, built to endure. At almost the same time, Emily Martin's MAVEN team recorded a separate shock. Between September 27th and October 6th, the ultraviolet spectrograph mapped a hydrogen halo spreading farther than any comet should at that distance from the sun. Hydrogen halos form when sunlight splits water molecules, so the sheer scale implied that massive volumes of water were venting from deep inside. This isn't surface frost, 
Martin noted. This is internal. Those two findings, the hardened cocoon and the deep-sourced vapor, crack the classical comet model wide open. Normally, comets are porous rubble piles. Sunlight peels away their frost. Yet 3i Atlas stayed solid, its gases escaping in an almost regulated way. It behaved less like a melting rock and more like something maintaining itself. High-Rise's Mars orbiting cameras soon confirmed the scale. In early October, the team captured a luminous semicircle 20 to 25 kilometers wide. The brightest arc faced the sun, the trailing edge dissolving into haze. Dust clung to one hemisphere, hinting at a crust venting selectively, perhaps even rotating under control. The structure was massive but coherent, the opposite of fragile debris. A week later, the punch mission added another twist. Its wide field imager caught a faint secondary tail, veering sideways, angled sharply off the line to the sun. Normally, tails align with solar wind pressure. Here, the deviation was inexplicable. Models failed to reproduce it. Some proposed an eddy in solar plasma, but others saw something stranger, asymmetric jets acting like thrusters beneath a crust. Then came Psyche's turn. Over eight hours of tracking, the spacecraft's navigation team recorded precise positional data. When plotted, the path showed tiny, rhythmic deviations, small, deliberate nudges. Gravity alone couldn't explain them. During a live mission call, an analyst reportedly gasped, realizing what the residuals meant. It's being pushed, she said, by something. The effect was modest but undeniable. For the first time, an interstellar visitor's non-gravitational acceleration was confirmed in real time by multiple instruments. Across NASA, scientists froze. Soon after, Spherex swept its infrared detectors across 3i Atlas and found yet another anomaly. The object was too warm, not slightly but significantly. Its core radiated heat far above expectations for its distance from the sun. Some blamed a dark surface absorbing sunlight, others internal heating or pressurized gases. None of it fit neatly. The infrared glow implied a layered interior, an insulating shell covering volatile, active layers within. Lucy's observations reinforced the mystery. From millions of kilometers away, it tracked the object's brightness as the viewing angle changed. Normally, Brightness drops as the phase angle widens, but 3i Atlas's light curve stayed almost perfectly flat. It reflected light uniformly, as if its surface were engineered for consistency. Soho brought a surprise of its own. In visible wavelengths, the object was barely detectable, yet infrared telescopes recorded strong emissions. That mismatch suggested large, dark grains or materials that absorb light but re-emit as heat a composition alien to solar system comets. And then James Webb delivered the blow that sent everyone back to the drawing board. Its spectra showed absorption lines that matched nothing in existing databases. Not silicates, not simple organics, not any combination of known ices. Some bands hinted at ammonia hydrates and exotic carbon chains. Others defied classification entirely. Whatever 3i Atlas was made of, its chemistry came from conditions colder or stranger than anything near our sun. By November, the gallery of data looked like a jigsaw puzzle from another universe. Hubble's cocoon, Maven's vast hydrogen halo, High Rise's dust semicircle, Punch's crooked tail, Psyche's coarse shift, Spherex's warmth, Lucy's steady brightness, Soho's faint optical trace, and Webb's alien chemistry. Together, they refused to form a normal picture. Standard comet theory collapsed under the weight of contradictions. The nucleus stayed whole where others fragment. Its gas release was uniform, not chaotic. Its tail bent the wrong way. Its temperature was too high. Its reflectivity too stable. Its composition too foreign. One by one, veteran scientists began to admit it. The textbook definition of a comet no longer applied. Inside NASA, debate became philosophy. Some argued that 3i Atlas must be a fragment of an exomoon crust ripped from a frozen satellite during a collision light years away. Others proposed a planetesimal born in the farthest reaches of a protosystem, layered by cosmic radiation and preserved for eons. Another camp suggested it might be a survivor from a shattered world's core, a dense relic built to last the journey between stars. Whatever the truth, Every hypothesis carried implications that stretched far beyond this one visitor. 
For the first time, humanity was watching a messenger from another solar system up close, not a fleeting blur like Taumuamua, but a sustained observation campaign covering the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And the message it carried was clear. Our models are too small for the universe that created this. NASA's mission logs now read like a timeline of awakening, Hubble diverting from galaxies, Web pausing exoplanets, Mars orbiters turning their gaze outward, solar probes pivoting away from the sun. Across millions of kilometers, every robotic eye looked toward one drifting object that behaved as if sculpted by alien physics. By December, as the final composite images rolled in, a quiet realization settled across the agency. The coordinated campaign had consumed months of planning, hundreds of gigabytes of data, and more than a dozen missions. The payoff wasn't a single discovery but a transformation, a forced evolution of how scientists think about small bodies, interstellar travel, and the ingredients that survive between stars. David Jewett, the same astronomer who helped classify the first Kuiper Belt objects decades ago, summarized it simply in a briefing. Every new data set from Atlas is another wrench thrown into our models. It's forcing us to rewrite the book. And rewrite it they will. Theories now range from collision debris to exomoon crust to engineered relic. None have been disproven and all remain on the table. Whatever 3i Atlas turns out to be, the unified mobilization it inspired may be its greatest legacy. For a brief moment, humanity scattered machines, from the inner heliosphere to Mars orbit and beyond, all turned their eyes toward one distant traveler, listening together. And as that traveler continues its slow arc past the sun, glowing with that strange blue cocoon and venting vapor from deep within, the scientists who chased it are left with a feeling rare in modern astronomy, genuine awe. The numbers still refuse to settle, the equations still fail to close, and the universe, as always, refuses to explain itself. Whatever crossed our sky as 3i Atlas has reminded us of something simple and humbling. Discovery is not finished. It never was. So the question now isn't whether we found another comet. It's whether we've just caught the first glimpse of a new class of object entirely, one that forces us to see the solar system and ourselves in a much larger story. What do you see when you look into the unknown?